We are in Banfield, located on the west coast of Vancouver Island, and we will be fishing with Martin Pace of the Sport Fishing Institute of BC. We are participating in an ongoing study led by the University of British Columbia, which is trying to determine the best handling practices and angling methods for increased survival of sport caught and released salmon. Yeah, so part of what we're doing with the study is uh, determining the difference uh, in terms of impact on fish on running an inline flasher versus a dummy flasher. So throughout the, uh, the FRIM study and uh, this respirometry study we're doing now, we've been comparing the effects. And the way we're doing that is we're gonna run a dummy flasher on one side and a uh, inline flasher on the other. And uh, we've found some really interesting results, um, getting basically the same number of bites on both sides, at least in my boat, we've been finding that we've been actually landing more um, without the flasher attached, so. Kind of the whiplash effect on the, when that flasher comes out, you get that. Exactly, exactly. Or if you got people on board who don't fish very much, I mean, how many times when you got friends or family that haven't fished a lot, that flasher pops out of the water and they go, oh, I lost it, right? Yeah. And that's that moment of slack that we're talking about that makes all the difference, so. We're trying something a little bit unique on the dummy side today as well. Check this out. So that is a naked hoochie. That's a, that's a hoochie. Which I've never seen ever in my life. Okay. Look at that, look at that action. Look. <laughs> that okay. thing's deadly. You think a fish might bite that? Oh yeah, that looks very good. Right? They've been really, uh, really crushing the white hoochies out here. Yeah. And um, just wanted to figure out a way to do that without a flasher and uh, We've got some nice fish on this rig, so we'll see what happens today, but we've been getting some really nice fish on it. Also gives you the ability with a dummy to drop your gear back more without having a leader that's so long that it's hard for people to get the fish near the net. Right. So I can still run about a four foot leader here, but have the, uh, the hoochie actually six, seven, eight feet back from the flasher if I want. Right. Right. Yeah. And then clearer water, that sometimes makes a diff. But now we're gonna run it a little tighter because that's what's been working. All right, we're back in the water. We're fishing. Fish on here. Outstanding. Like a nice one. Chase, he's smoking line out. Oh, that's that sensitive line, eh? Yeah. Look at that. That's a nice spring, that one. Nice spring. Got him right on the turn here. I'll right turn on, the other right one. Right on the edge of, uh... oh, jeez, he's <laughs> just screaming. Right on the edge there. Look at him going back the other way now. <laughs> hey? It's a he's wild angry. fish. Yep. <laughs> that was just, this fish is going bonkers. It's a nice one. Hit really hard again, oh, eh? Oh, yeah, he smoked it. They just, that's just the deal with kind of gear we're using is they really hammer it. Oh yeah, it's nice that's little, a nice one. Nice thick fish. Oh yeah, yeah that's a nice one. Try a gaff release here? Sure. Trick here is where we're gonna try and minimize the handling on this awesome beautiful fish. Yeah, great fighter. And this uh, the idea being it was what a great fighter, right? Eh? Yeah, beautiful and fish. We'll just use the gaff here like this, get the hook, give it a Quick flip, and off it goes. Look at that one, swimming away. No Beauty. touch, hey. Fantastic, no handling. Nice job. Awesome fish, man. That was a good fish. Let's get Perfect. right back in that nice. zone there. There's, there's a bite, it's happening. You figure? <laughs> so basically, you're holding that leader down low, right? You're running your gaff down the line, okay? It's gonna hook into the corner of the hook like this. Tension, pull it, both at the same time. Hand forward, gaff back. And that will release right out of the fish's mouth. Hey Martin, this is our second year joining you guys with the study here in Banfield on uh, proper handling techniques, releasing techniques of, of fish. One of the things that we're finding from the study early on is, uh, well not early on, but in the process of catching and releasing fish multiple different ways, is that one technique is kind of coming to the forefront as the best way to release a fish. That's absolutely true. It's the gaff release. And uh, the reason we're saying that and uh, what we're finding is um, it's minimizing handling that makes the difference. So no right? touch of the fish. If you can get, a, if you're not gonna keep it, if you can release a fish cleanly without taking it out of the water and just let it swim off, 
that is absolutely the best thing for that fish, gives it the best chance of survival. So that's where the gaff release comes in. Um, as we can see, you can, you know, you can leave the fish with its head in the water, can slide that gaff down, give it a little pull, hold it low on the leader, and uh, that fish is, that hook pops out and it just swims away. Yeah, with that barbless hook and there's a little bit of tension, you know, pulling back and a quick little Absolutely. Hands down, what we've found is minimizing handling. Is There's the a fish. How is that for timing? You Here like that? Okay. <laughs> Outstanding. Oh, he's just head shaking like mad. This braid is nuts, I was dude. Just like, gonna say, I think got, I've lost him three times you already. Got no, uh, you got no uh, sponge with braid, right? Every massive head shake, it's like, oh my god! Remember oh, we said oh. that they, remember we said that they hit hard, oh my. peel okay. line right off the rigger. That's exactly what happened. He's 100 yards out on the surface back there, and it was 25 yards out before he could even get to the rod. Oh I mean, they're god. just pounding this stuff. So what were we talking about before we got rudely interrupted here by this fish? Well, <laughs> what we're going to try and do once you gain about 150 yards of line back <laughs> is uh, if we can get this fish alongside the boat, we're going to uh, demonstrate how a gaff release works. So we're going to. Uh, ensure that the fish is alongside the boat, boat's in gear, we're gonna clear our downriggers and our release clips out of the way, yeah. so there's nothing for it to get tangled in. Then we're gonna use the gaff, slide it down the line to get it at a pivot point on the hook. We'll give it a slight pull and that hook should just pop right out. Right, all technique, right? Like it should come out super smooth. It will. And uh, you know, it can be a little intimidating when people haven't done it, but obviously encourage you to do it and it's you know it's going to be probably one of the main methods moving forward here of how to handle fish and release them properly absolutely and you know we talked about this a little bit earlier on in the study i mean when we think about ourselves as anglers we have a responsibility to do this kind of stuff right if we're going to be involved in catch and release fishing the role that we can play for sustainability is to make sure that if we're going to release a fish that fish has every possible chance to survive to spawn and that's really what this is all about right it's, absolutely we're gonna let them go we might as well make sure that they're gonna complete their journey yeah. make more salmon for the future and that's really what this is all about the way this thing hit and ran and is scrapping we want that one to make more just like him you know or her. i want someone else to experience this right like this fight's been incredible it's amazing you're still he, only halfway back you know what he's just he's just a stubborn fish he's just oh yeah he's just bulldog down there oh, oh look at that what a beautiful chinook nice fish that's a beautiful chinook you got him by the pectoral that's skin. why that's why he felt like he was a lot bigger but he's just still a nice fish oh, yeah, beautiful he's a beauty all right we don't always hook him in the mouth. That fish, yeah. uh, I think it bit hard and then probably rolled onto the hook, but we've got him uh, just uh, in front of the pectoral fin here. So, oh, off he went. That's part of fishing. That is part of fishing. You know what? That's actually a pretty clean release. That's a single barbless hook. It's gonna fall out real quick. Yeah. And um, shows you the power of these things. That's 60 pound test leader. Um, snapped but that like how nothing. fast that thing moved, slapped, snapped it like nothing. Crazy. So, uh, let's go back in and get another one. Let's Hopefully get back, one like that one. Back that was in the mix. That unreal bite, scrap. That bite was incredible. Unbelievable scrap. Martin's into one here. So what's gonna happen is if we can get this fish in and get it in the net, um, is the other boat's gonna come over and uh, they're gonna pick it up. And then it's gonna go into the respirometry tubes. I can tell that this fish is the right size. Uh, we don't want them for respirometry. They don't want them too big. Oh yeah, he's a nice fish, beautiful fish. Chrome bullet, nice job. Fish in. In the net, sweet. In the net. So you can see here, we, we're netting this fish obviously for this study, but look at the tails actually sticking through the net. So you can see the damage that can be caused by netting a fish. You got it? Yeah, good. Yeah. That's... Sweet. We're on the board. Stage one. <laughs> that's a decent fish too. That is a nice fish. Look at that thing. <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with that. So now what they're gonna do is take this fish back. On their way there, they're already putting it in a tube that is a respirometer tube. You can see how fast they're moving to get it in there. So that's our fourth fish for the day. So uh, we're done today for respirometry. Nice that's, job on that fish. That's a beauty fish. That was a very, very nice Chinook. That was almost too big. That was a chrome bullet, that one. Okay.
After fishing through the morning, we returned to the Banfield Marine Science Center to see firsthand what the next steps were for a caught fish in the respirometry study. Okay, we're back at the dock now. We got a fish uh, that's been caught, yep. and we're gonna we're gonna walk through the steps here of the process that you guys have been doing. Okay, so we caught it on the water, and as quickly as we can, we put it in this tube. Yep. Uh, inside of here, we're measuring the oxygen consumption of the fish, kind of a proxy. You see athletes do it on TV, stuff like that. So we put it in this tube, seal it up, and we get a measure of how quickly it's consuming oxygen. Um, we call mm -hmm. that the maximum met metabolic rate. Um, we measure it for about an hour after that. Um, then Quinn's gonna take it out of the tube get a blood sample an hour after the fishing event. Yeah, so like you mentioned, similar to an athlete who's you know wearing a face mask, doing VO2 testing yep. to see how hard this fish is working or exerting itself, and then measuring again after it's kind of come down from its peak exertion to see where it's at. Yeah, exactly. And so people go, how long ago was this fish caught exactly? It was like? Pretty well right on the hour. An hour. Yeah, we take it right when the fish is in the bag, the clock starts and we gotta get in the tube as yeah. fast as we can. Nice. And then Quinn will take a nice blood sample, just uh, one or two milliliters, keep it simple for the fish. Um, and we'll measure different types of metabolites, um, cortisol, lactate, stuff like that. You would expect to go um, rise in a fish that just went through an angling event. Uh, we do a fin assessment here just to see how everything's holding together, if there's tearing of the fins, and kind of give it a scale across all seven fins. So probably a fish that's never been netted before? No. Right? Not in our experience, no. We basically can't really see it on your side, but we have on this system a tube that we have our two sensors in. One does temperature, one does oxygen. We cap a lid on here. It's actually just behind me. Nice big heavy duty lid that the, completes the seal. Um, and inside we have a pump that pumps the water through, creates a nice little bit of circulation for the fish, gives it a orientation type thing. So basically when we seal this tube, the fish is separate from all the water in the, uh, in the tote here. And so we're able to see the oxygen decline. Flush pumps kicks on and provides fresh bubbled water that brings oxygen right back up. So we can repeat that measurement over and over again for the hour here and then several hours on land. Okay, I'm here with JC and Brian, and we've just brought these fish up from the boat. So we got these fish in the respirometry setup tanks, and what, what's, what's the procedure now? Yeah, so the fish are in the respirometers. They'll be in there overnight, and we have the fish on a cyclic measurement, so water is flushing through some of the uh, respirometers right now. Yeah. And in a few minutes, that will stop and we'll get the measurement of the oxygen consumption. And it'll be doing this all night. Uh, we'll, we'll check on them throughout the night and in the morning we'll take them out. And that's when we do the, the manual lab chase. So we take a fish out of the respirometer. We put it actually in here. Okay. This is the, we call it the chase tape. And we chase the fish for three minutes and it's supposed to mimic an, an angling event. And then we hold it in the air for a minute to also mimic an angling event. Yeah. And then we put it back in the respirometer and do an hour measurement, just like on the boat. So once we move, the, after we agitate the fish and move them back in here, and you were talking about doing a bunch of readings, what is that telling us or telling you guys? So it's a really good comparison. Uh, a lot of studies in the past have only looked at this component. They've only looked at that chase in the respirometer, and that is how we we imagine, or that's what we believe is their maximum capacity. But now that we have the angling event to compare with the, that same individual, we're able to assess which event actually uh, cre gets them to their highest maximum metabolic rate. As we've been talking here, you may have noticed some of the pumps. This is just their flush water, kind of both an indicator, but as well as it isolates the chamber from the fresh water supply when it's sealed to measure our oxygen. Um, as we've been talking here, they've probably shut off or on a couple times like that. And so at the computer, right here, you can basically just see each of these plateaus is where the fish chamber was flushing. And we brought that to as high as oxygen level as we could for the fish. Then we seal the chamber or the flush pump shuts off and you can see that oxygen decline, and that's where we're getting that the consumption of oxygen for each fish. Uh, we take it down a bit, uh, then after a set time interval, uh, the pump queues up again, brings that oxygen back up, and that's how we're getting each of those measurements for fish. Um, and then it's the slope of that line that's important 
um, to describe that oxygen uh, of a consumption rate or the maximum metabolic rate. And in this case, these fish are kind of chilling or recovering. So we're gonna see that kind of dwindle overnight and that slopes can be less and less steep for each fish as we progress throughout the day. They're like, they're like athletes sitting in a cold tub right now, right? They're just, they're, this is their flush. Yeah, yeah, this is their recovery. <laughs> for these guys, it's perfect. Nice chilled water, well oxygenated, and good uh, to go. I miss that part of, of uh, playing sports. <laughs> After participating in the study, Martin and I returned to the water to try and catch some more fish and to demonstrate recommended release techniques. All right, we got a coho on here, and we're just going to gaff release this fish once he stops freaking out. Okay, so we're just gonna grab the leader down close to this fish. We're gonna run your gaff down to the bottom of your spoon, and you're gonna apply tension to the line pulling forward and your gaff pulling backwards, and it's gonna happen quick. So it comes right down, and he's gone. So again, I grab low down to my, my spoon there. Okay, I pull tension forward. At the same time, I'm running my gaff down my leader line into my hook, I grab the base of my hook, I pull forward, I pull back, and that fish slides right off. Oh, it's a proper one. It's a real fish. Martin, it's about time you showed up today. <laughs> there we go. That's a nice one, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The beauty. What an epic run. Yeah, it's angry. Ooh, there's that flasher popping out, eh? That Gotta we love talked that about. Stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Decent good one. size tail on that one. Let's see. What a beautiful looking Chinook. That's eh? a nice fish. Nice, right in the corner of the mouth. The kelp. Now is we still just got to figure there. out how to get him past right. that kelp so we can release. You know what? Him. I might try and pop that kelp off. Try and pull him on top, maybe, or clear oh, the gear I'll, on that maybe side. Maybe I'll try and pop that kelp off. Because he's being cooperative for now, <laughs> but that ain't gonna last. He's going right into the kelp now. I'm over it. We're over the kelp. Oh, you beauty. are. Nah. Uh, this thing is a massive oh, piece of Oh, he wants the kelp. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop chuck that it. kelp. Chuck it, right now. <laughs> yeah, and then I can kind of work him around it. Okay, sweet. Oh yeah, he's hooked, he's hooked perfect. All right, okay. okay, we're gonna gaff release this guy here. So grab a hold of that line, slide your gaff straight down, get on the hook shank, and then just pull towards you. There he goes, and he's gone. <laughs> nice fish. Holy smokes, did we earn that one. Oh. <laughs> wow, that, that was, was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Beautiful night, amazing fish. That was you awesome. Know? That was an overtime, right at the last minute. You bet. Yeah, well, look, the sun's starting to set. It's beautiful. a beautiful evening tonight. It's flattened right out too, hey? It has, yeah. Not a breath of wind. Yeah, that was spec. That was awesome. That was a great fish. Good job. Thank were, you, you. were you feeling pressure on that one? Just a little. <laughs> Heart was beating I, a little faster. Honestly, I don't think I've ever felt so much pressure <laughs> on fish, to be honest with you. It's a funny thing fishing, eh? You go. <sighs> Some days you're in the zone, you can't do yes. anything wrong. And then there's some days you miss a couple and you start thinking, what am I doing here? Now you end the day like the best fisherman in the world. It felt, it feels so good. It's I like, mean, just to look out like that, this is what we're trying to protect and preserve is what yeah. we're doing right now, man. I mean, this is a pretty, uh, pretty awesome experience to be able to enjoy this resource. Thanks dude. That Thank was a great so day on the water. Fantastic. Tons of fun. Really appreciate it. Learned a lot. It's always really exciting to come fish out of Banfield because it's such a beautiful area with an amazing diverse fishery. We truly appreciate the time and effort put into the health and longevity of our fishery by the SFI. And the team at UBC are super passionate and have put a significant amount of work into these projects. The knowledge gained from these studies can help sports fishermen maintain access and enjoy this resource for years to come.